Jupiter Broadcasting presents this show in mega stereo sound. This episode brought to you in part by GoDaddy.com. This week on the Linux Action Show. Is Canonical picking Banshee's pockets and hurting the GNOME project? We've got a few theories for what's going on here. Then Google and Oracle's battle over Android is heating up. But is this just a distraction from what we really need? Tune in to find out. Plus so much more. Oh, this week on the Linux Action Show. And welcome to the Linux Action Show Season 14 Episode... I just did this and well episode seven it's episode seven everybody don't listen to anyone who tells you it's episode anything other than seven because seven is the proper episode number my name is brian that guy over there is chris hey there brian check out this awesome um megaphone i guess you could call it if you're watching the video version awesome. it is kind of a massive phone awesome. but what's cool about it it's dude it's dual core okay so that's rad dual core arms Runs Android or Ubuntu. Gosh, that's glorious. Now it's way big. It's it's but wait, wait, you know is there, this is, is just a prototype model. screens on it, so it's one screen for each. Yeah, and look on the uh, video out. It's uh, it's Ubuntu on the. Uh, this the is what I feed. want. So it. This is what I, know, I want. Right? I want a smartphone. Like they've got. I mean, they've been rumoring about uh, like the quad core arms coming to smartphones over the next year or so. I'm like, dude, yeah. a quad core arm, stick it in there, run Ubuntu or or some other great Linux distro. Come on, he's got a USB keyboard from. hooked up to it. He's got a USB keyboard hooked up God, to it. God, that's what I want. I want to I want to get to work. <laughs> oh. I want to sit down at my desk, plug it in, and that be my main yes. like productivity machine. Sure. Maybe now, for development purposes, I want something beefier. But for day to day usage, some web browsing, yeah. some email, playing back it's some rocking. music, why not just stick it right in there? It's everything I want. It's it's a tablet. It's a smartphone. It's a laptop. It's everything. That why not? Why yeah. don't we have that yet? Well, the fact that we don't have that makes Brian angry, and he just starts talking, and he won't stop, and he doesn't let Chris get in a word in edgewise because of. It. And this is what we have so to angry. put up with. You know what you got though is the Motorola Atrix is coming out right, and that's that Android phone that you can dock into a laptop. Yeah, dock. that's pretty cool. That's cool, but it's that splash top Linux, whereas this is rocking Ubuntu. A full on desktop want, distro. Th that's what I want. I want a full Linux, Brian, because that that you put that in there, you get that all loaded up, and just like you're saying, well, in this case, and with a thing like that, you'd have to throw it in your backpack. But you know, that's still so cool. it's a step in the right direction. So cool. It's, you know, beginner. So yeah. cool. Now, how you doing, man? So uh, one, uh, you're you're at home this week, staying. Yeah, I'm, I'm at home still. So I'm uh, I'm sitting here at my uh, at my desk out here, and uh, I'm actually in my pajamas right now. Though you don't know that because uh, I've got this blazer on to cover up the fact that I'm in my pajamas. So don't nice. tell anyone watching the show that I'm in my pajamas okay. right now. That'll we'll keep that our little secret. We won't tell. Holy moly! How are you doing? I'm pretty good. I got family coming over you got later. Family today. Family coming over? Yeah. So it'll probably be you know one of those things where I, I'll probably start editing the show, and right as I get the show just about ready to encode and upload, that's when family's going to arrive. So then it's just going to sit there all ready to go on my hard drive, but not able to get Man, it out. It's and the like entire your time family here, hates the Linux Action Show. They the, hate open Brian, source. The internet. The internet. The internet. Man, they hate it. I mean, I'm trying to contribute, you know, Hate. the Linux action show to the internet. Wow. wow. I, know, I know, and they stop wow. that. Our but you know who doesn't Oracle stop us, Brian? You know who never stops us? They enable us, and that's GoDaddy.com. GoDaddy.com. Everybody, go ahead, check out, type in Linux, you get 10% on a domain name purchase. Type in Linux 2.0, you get 20% on the whatever purchase that you do. On uh, hosting. And you know what? I did a little bit of fancy. What's I good? registered a couple of domains last Thank night. You. I did. I registered two domains, a jblive.am <laughs> and jblive.tv. And jblive.am cool. takes you right to our live audio stream and jblive.tv takes you right to our video stream. And I wanted to point something out because I noticed something when I was jumping around. I actually bought a few things last night. I'll be honest. I went on a little bit of a shopping spree over on GoDaddy. And I noticed that when you're, when you're ordering now, check that order summary area because there's a little link there you click to enter promo code. And that's the trick now because you, you enter that and then you just enter right there. You can enter in Linux or whatever you like and it applies right the, away. Uh, the discount you that see way. It. And then you can continue you to check right out there. and you save yourself you some right cash. there. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you, GoDaddy. Awesome too. stuff. Playing for the things and the stuff and the whatnot. Yeah. Great. And thanks to Danica for uh, saying good morning to us uh, 
And one more, one more edition oh, yeah, of the yeah. By the way, show. way more thanks to Danica than to GoDaddy, because really Danica <laughs> made this all possible. She is a racing star and a GoDaddy girl, copyright, and she's a customer. Oh my gosh! Yep, I know. Yep. I know. Yep. I've got. I have it on good, a good authority that uh, Danica runs the Open Sousa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She seems like she likes. Heard that? I would. I could see that from an authority. Yeah. You know, race car drivers don't have a lot of time to tweak configuration nope, files, nope, so nope. they prefer to nope, use. They like to go to uh, websites and have one-click installs. So that's why Danica they should put Danica up on the OpenSUSE page. Now, I want to tell you, Brian, about a slick Android pick. All right. Uh, now, um, it's called RD Mute, and it's totally free. And here's why I R love it. Mute. You ever you ever been like in a meeting or you're at home watching TV? Uh, maybe browsing the web for porn, something like that, and you get a phone call coming in, and you pick it up, and you look at it, and you go, oh, man, that jerk again. you know. And you take that phone, and you just want to put it down. Like you would hang up an old-school phone, because what what was the best thing about old-school phones? It. You could yeah. hang them up. That was yeah, great. you hang that sucker yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. So this is RD Mute, and it, it uh, uses the accelerometer in your phone so that when you flip the phone face down, uh, it automatically mutes and silences the incoming That's call. That's awesome. It is, yeah, right? That, and that uh, really is not that useful, but that is so important. No. <laughs> Why do you think it's called It's just RD one of those small mute. things. I, I don't know. I guess maybe RD might be the uh, function Redirect? maybe of the ringer or something. I don't know. Not sure. I don't know, but yeah, that's, that's fantastic. That's yeah, fantastic. and it's nice because it's a back-end service, so you don't have to have like the application running all the time. Now, <laughs> I have uh, been running, I just about midweek upgraded my Evo to uh, Cyanogen Mod 7. RC, the release candidate on the 16th. Dude, yeah. man, digging the gingerbread. It's not it? like it's not answering all it's not answering all my complaints about Android, but it's definitely a little peppier and it's more polished. They've they've honestly it's a little more Windows 7 ish. Yeah. Like the text and stuff. And it's a little flatter of an interface. But they've I, oh. I'm pretty sure unless this is uh Cyanogen that did this, they've integrated that flip to mute function. Really? So yeah, so I, <laughs> so if you have gingerbread, you can flip to mute out See, of the I box. Like that. The other thing the other thing they integrated is uh, SIP internet calling, integrated into the dialer. So you, when you press call, instead of going out over the CDMA antenna on my Evo, it goes out over the Wi-Fi using SIP. And I linked that up to my uh, Google Voice account so I can take and receive calls over Wi-Fi on my, on my I like uh, that. Evo. I found the quality kind of sucks. I've what? only I only did about three calls and I gave up because uh, the latency was good. In fact, dude, check this out. Over SIP, my phone would actually ring before... Because on Google Voice, all of my phones ring, yeah. you know? And so on cell, my cell phone would always kind of be like the last phone to pick up. My house phone would oh, ring first. Things like that. But over SIP, uh, that that Evo is ringing before pretty much anything else is. That's it's pretty, pretty interesting cool. how much faster that is. Uh, but unfortunately, the call quality wasn't very good. And then the, the people on the other end complained about Echo and stuff like Lame. that. I don't know if there was something I could have tweaked, but I turned off the internet calling in Gingerbread. It just wasn't working. Lame. Because I like that idea I a lot. Hey, I mentioned really quick that uh, you can go to uh, jblive.am, yeah. you know? Well, jblive.am redirects to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash listen, and that's our 24-7 audio stream. And I want to say a big thanks to, to Tommy Braun. Uh, he's in the Jupiter Colony chat room, or a Jupiter Colony forum as Navon, and he made us a very it's nice slick looking. live stream. Yeah, dude, and you know what's awesome is it renders well on the desktop web browser, but it also rocks on a mobile device, pretty much yeah, all so, of them. So you, you have pretty much any mobile device. You can listen to us on the go all the time. Mm -hmm. You will never mm -hmm. be devoid yeah. of Jupiter Broadcasting. So that's uh, jblive.am to that's uh, glorious. stream glorious. And if you're on Android, I've recommended Stream Furious in the past. to, to Which works. I hear. So there you go. That's what I yeah, hear. I hear it that's what great. I hear. All right. Yeah. Hey, what's that? Wait, well, Chris. What's going on right now? Brian. Brian. What? Is, what Brian. What's going on? Yeah. Brian. Brian. Yeah. Let's do the news. What? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The, no, don't stop recording, Chris. Don't stop recording. You reached your hand over. No, I'm All switched right. to you. All right. Well, I, I have a correction to make. You may remember oh, previously okay. on the Linux Action Show, and by previously I mean around four and a half to six minutes ago, we said that this was episode, <laughs> uh, episode uh, uh, seven of season 14. I yeah. have been informed by the internet that this is in fact we made a boo -boo. incorrect. It is season, 15, season 15, episode Brian. seven. Yeah. I am terribly, terribly mistaken. You see, here's the thing. I'm so tired. 
And I got it wrong. <laughs> I, that's all yeah. I got. That's all I got. It's so, a hard job, man. The, you know, because you got to remember two different sets of numbers every, every single week. week, guys. You don't you don't know how hard that is. This is my, what I do. No, I, I, do. I have to every week remember what episode it is and say it. Do you know how mm-hmm. hard that is for me? At the me? same time. It's really, At the really same rough. time, man. Uh, the other thing is, you should note the journalistic integrity of the Linux Action Show. As soon as we get something wrong, boom, we screwed up. In fact, we will be the first to admit how retarded we are from time to time. So, so therefore, sure. when we say things and we don't mention how retarded we're being, you should probably take it as gospel truth and not question it at all. And then what you should do is right. you should go and just yell, just yell and just at, assume it's at, true. The, at the, all the other Linux uh, podcasts out there. You should just yell at them. You just yell at them. Oh just boy. call them up. Oh just boy. send them emails. Oh boy. All in caps. Like, why are you Here guys, why are you guys not the Linux Action Show? Just all in caps. I mean, and I want it to be pages of pages of all in caps. I don't want punctuation unless it's an exclamation mark. I don't want, uh, I, I, I don't want, I don't want a commas. I don't want, this is going to be a trade race. Uh, you know, just, just all in caps. So, oh. oh God. Were we all right, Brian, should we talk about our first story on the news docket? What do you think? All right. What do you think? Hey, Chris. I mean, we're going to, we're going to hey, be Chris. drowned now in hate. Yeah. Let's do yeah. the news. Oh, wait, we already did that. All right, all right Brian. Uh, Brian, I'll tell you our top story yeah, on the news topic for this week. <laughs> Now, uh, here we go, man. Banshee versus Ubuntu. It's hit It's hit the wall, the S officially. Uh, a canonical contacted the uh, Banshee folks and said, look, for the addition we're going to include in the Ubuntu desktop, we're going to need to disable the Amazon store. Huh. Or you can give us a 75% cut. What's a big cut? 75% is a big, big cut. And here's the extra salt in the wound. Uh, so Banshee makes its money from the Amazon affiliate, just like oh, we for do for sure, our, yeah. our Amazon affiliate store. And and the and the reality is that's just not no, a lot of money. No, you don't make a lot of so that. a seventy five percent cut of that would literally be pennies Nothing. that you would get. Nothing. And so in two thousand and ten, I I want to say there's the, probably the exact figure is here in the yeah here it is. In two thousand and ten, the Banshee project raised uh, three grand for no for the gnome that's project. Banshee. That's Banshee selling through their Amazon affiliate store. And now remember, Banshee is made by Novell. Right. And Novell had an internal conversation, a dialogue, and they said, okay, we can make some revenue off this affiliate business. But it's so little. Do we want... Yeah, I know. So why don't we be good guys and we'll give it to the Gnome yeah. Project? Because we're building our part of our business, not all of our business, but we're building a large part of our business. On the success or a significant of that part project. Off of Gnome. Yeah, totally yeah, Banshee, makes sense. Yes, absolutely. It's an ecosystem that they were supporting. Yep. So... Uh, that's where it's a little extra bit of a of a dagger, right? Because people are looking at this and they're going, "Well, Canonical's already switching away from uh, GNOME a and lot." And now they're trying there, to pull you know, money away from GNOME. Is how people are looking at it. That's how people are looking. That's at it. really rough. I I don't know why Canonical is doing that. That's just such a horrible PR move. It's just so bad. <laughs> There's no good PR. Out like of this. like maybe maybe they just didn't think it through. You know what I mean? Maybe they didn't research it. Maybe they just saw it and they're like, man, Nokia is trying to make a ton of money. We're not going to make money for or not Nokia, Novell. Sorry, it's early. Yeah. There. See, there I go. I, I corrected myself. I'm not going to correct myself good the rest job, of the man. show, which means everything I say from here forward is correct. So 100%. Uh, so no, they're like, oh, Novell is making a bunch of money. So so let's 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 say you know what uh, they have to take it out if they want uh, if we want to put Banshee here in uh, in Ubuntu. Maybe they just thought that didn't look into it any further and just I doubt it, it man. good. I doubt it. Here's Ooh. where here's where I could see Maybe. it. You know, here's where it seems like it's going from the standpoint of look, Canonical doesn't have a lot of solid revenue streams, right? right. So you figure they need everything. They're they trying to they're trying to push Ubuntu one. They're trying to push their music yep. store. And they're trying to say, look, we're building this Linux desktop. We're, we're spending, you know, Mark Shuttleworth is spending millions on the Ubuntu project right. or has spent. He could, you know, he could have gone to space is the way he's looking at it. With his again. He's already gone once. He's got the connections. You know, he could go again if he wanted to. But instead, he's spending on Ubuntu. And he says, look, I'm not spending my hard earned space dollars on Ubuntu. So they have a competitor come in and put their store in there and make a, make a buck off of me. Right, because think about the man hours they put into developing Ubuntu just to have another company come in and put their product in there to make money. But at the same yeah. time, when you're building a general purpose operating system, you're building a platform for other people to come in on it. Right. Use. No, but see, but see, and, on the same token, though, you don't see you you would never see you know Microsoft or Apple allowing a, you know a media player come in and 
Well, no, that's not true. That's not true. My, Microsoft has to allow OEMs to bundle, like, you know, Music Match and, and uh, you know, <laughs> Music Match. <laughs> or, you know, all the all the various third-party jukeboxes. Like they have to let OEMs whatnot. do yeah. that. Yeah, but, but they themselves but, yeah. are not bundling those things in that, a lot, that right. give other people right. revenue. So I, I, I kind of see where Canonical is coming from. But on the same token, the net effect of what they're accomplishing is just pulling money away from GNOME for no yeah. good reason. I mean, a, a couple thousand bucks. It means it's not going to make or break Canonical. That's not going to. That's not going to allow Canonical to hire a bunch of new devs. That that's not even going to allow Canonical to hire a bunch of new devs in you know a third world country. So so why right. after the management overhead anyway? So why 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 do it? It just seems like it's just kind of a jerk move almost. I, so they, I, my guess is honestly they're going to rethink this because I think so too. And it's the weekend, and there probably just hasn't been an official statement. No one's made been yet. in the office, and yeah, yeah. Now uh, the, the 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 trans argument to that might be that you know Apple and Microsoft ship Windows Media Player and iTunes respectively, and you know they have full control over the music store that shows up right. in there. The difference in this scenario is a different set of open source developers are making this project. So they're dictating the terms for an open source project if they want to be included. After after just being switched over to the default media player for Ubuntu, like that was a huge win for them. Yeah. And that was like a this might make the difference, you know, kind of a kind of a thing. This might be the breaking point where Banshee could get, you know, takes over Rhythm Box and becomes like a solid second place to Armor right. or something like that, you know. And now, now because of these actions, they're blocking they're blocking some of that traction. Now, it doesn't sound like the Banshee project was making their money off of that, anyways. But the gnome was gnome. Yeah, was. and me and maybe with know. Banshee as default on on the most popular brow, uh, distro out there, maybe maybe those numbers would skyrocket. You know, I mean, it's I mean, we're we're talking pretty massive numbers with 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 a bunch exactly. of exactly it could make a big difference. That's my point. You know, with a with that affiliate, if the if the Ubuntu desktop, it would take it would take a while for everyone to get to the rev of Ubuntu yeah. that has Banshee. But once it got there, that could be some significant revenue that gets generated for. Speaking GNOME. of which. I have to say yeah. this. This is, you know, a totally off topic. You mentioned, you know, how long it'll take for people to get to the latest rev. It amazes me, considering that all these distros have six-month release cycles, how far behind so many Linux users are in those release cycles. I mean, I know that we're always updating to the latest and greatest because that's our job. You know, that's what yeah. we got to do. We, yeah. we're Hell, we're as soon as a new alpha comes out, we're installing it. But, you know, like when, uh, let's say, you know, uh, Ubuntu 10.10. .10. It's been out for a little while now. It's a good release. You know what I mean? It's it's quality. Uh, a lot of people like it. Um, I know so many people that are still like on 904 um, or even earlier. Yeah. So many yeah, people. Know. People that listen to this show. And it absolutely boggles my mind. Which, which, think about it for a second. I mean, Linux users really are not upgrading that rapidly. You know what I mean? They're, they're sticking to some of the older distros, at least like a year or so older. If that's the case, why on earth are the distros releasing new releases every right. six months when the users aren't really upgrading that fast? I guess a certain segment is, and it's the goal to push forward, but it just uh, you know, keep my things mind. moving. It is pretty interesting. It is interesting, especially when you see it. You, you could expect it from Boom. an enterprise chat room. Level Majo, distro. cough, still on eight oh four for my desktop. It's a hassle to upgrade. That's just it. You get it. You working, get it working, right? and you stick and with some it. Some people just eight oh four. If you think about though, that's three years old. That's a three year old machine right there. I mean that. I mean for OS wise, that's just that's pure insanity, man. I, I can't even. I can't even fathom yeah. it. You're missing out on a lot of new drivers. You're missing out on a lot of performance enhancements. Yeah, I yeah. assume. And a lot of new libraries. Yeah, but, and stuff but yeah. So anyway, so back to the back to the whole uh, Banshee thing. I obviously yeah. uh, Canonical should not be doing that. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and just say that they didn't think it through. They didn't really process this. And you know what? I bet you come this next week they'll yank it. You know if and if can not, I, can I just if make a not, side point? I'll probably yell at them next week. So so I know. Can I just the side point I'd like to make though is. I, I and I you know I gotta just make a full disclaimer. I'm just a dude on the internet. I don't know any of the business side. I don't know any of the contract side, revenue split stuff like that. But I let's be honest. A music store to make your revenue. And when when you've got iTunes and you've got Amazon MP3 and Magnatune and 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 E Music and all these all these services, a, a music store and then to. Not only not only to just I mean every, come on when everybody heard they're doing a music store everybody went. Okay, I'll do it to support them. Okay. Yeah, but it was. It was we did um, a lot of shrugging. Yeah, 
And so, and so now, to sort of fire this torpedo into the hornet's nest, when you already are on the verge of, of upsetting people, uh, which Kanako always seems to be walking that line anyway, so maybe they're just used to it, but you fire a torpedo into the hornet's nest over something that I think a lot of people don't see a long-term future in anyway. So it's almost like you're, you're, you're just screwing the pooch for the pride principle of the matter yeah. or something. Yeah. I don't know. And that's where I'm getting the disconnect because, and, and unless they get some sort of fantastic revenue split, but my understanding is the music in the Ubuntu One music store is not owned by no. Canonical. It's also an affiliate cross licensing deal from a music platform. It is. Provider. It is. It's, it's a. It, there's a platform. It's a provider that's I believe over in the UK. Um, we we talked about it when uh, when the Ubuntu One music store first shipped. But yeah, they you know it's it's just an it's just an average you know music store seller. I mean it's similar to just going through Amazon really. So you can't. You can't figure they're getting much more than just a couple of percentage points off of each sale. And while that's yeah. great, if someone goes in and buys, you know, just a crap ton of albums all at once and, you know, enough, you know, millions of people do that, you got you to figure yeah. people are already so invested into purchasing from Amazon or, or iTunes or they've got, you yeah. know, a, a Rhapsody account or, or something along those lines. Or they're just dedicated to only music that's Creative Commons and they only go through, you know, all those sources. So, well, and let's be fair, too. I mean, wouldn't you want... From an Ubuntu music store, the and I know they just simply can't do it because the provider doesn't offer it, but if you want an Ubuntu music store, don't you want your audio in AUG? Yeah. If you're getting it DRM free anyways, <laughs> why don't you, it, it's kind of like, wouldn't it be like going to a convention where it's all gadgets and, and everything takes C batteries and, and all they have there is D batteries. Yeah. I mean, it's like it doesn't fit with the, peop, with the expectations they of the consumer. They just didn't think it through. You know, it's it's well, or it's just not capable to provide it. Yeah, I understand that, but I just I guess I'm just kind of doubting the whole music service to begin with, and so it just doesn't seem like it's worth, uh, you know, see, doing I, when this. I, when to, I look to, at, to look at Canonical's rift. Ubuntu One Music Store, I honestly don't see them as thinking, oh, we're going to make a billion dollars off of the music store. I see them as thinking we're going to use the the music store as a means to make more money off of the Ubuntu One service itself. So they, they yeah. you, you sign up for the Ubuntu One add, service, yeah. you get additional uh, cloud storage. Sure. When you purchase music through the Ubuntu One music store, it automatically syncs with your cloud storage pool. So it, it automatically shoves it into your remote drive there, which means yeah. that you're more likely to fill it up and more likely to want to increase the amount you pay for Ubuntu One to get additional storage. And I, so from that from that point of view, to be fair, that that's that's where the Ubuntu One music store has <laughs> its leg up too for convenience. That Ubuntu One. Uh, total music syncing between your machines, the ability to stream it to mobile devices using the Ubuntu One application is a total package that, um, you know, Amazon MP3, for example, doesn't yeah. offer. But I can, also, I can also solve that same problem by just downloading my Amazon MP3s into my Dropbox, which, which is yeah, what, what I, I do now, too. You know, I, I just, I, I, exactly, I purchase my music and I throw it in my Dropbox, which is really no different, but they're, they're combining it all together. So I kind of get that. So I'm okay with all of that. You know what it's, we, you know, we've already, yeah. we've talked to death about, you know, whether, what formats they should support in the store. I'm, That's you're fine. Right, you're right. But really, I think the bigger thing here is they've, they've done, so, there's been so much scrutiny on Canonical over the last year, especially about, you know, them, you know, supporting their upstream distros, really giving back to the Debian project, really giving back to Gnome, um, and people really criticizing how well Canonical has done that. Um, and, you know, justifiably in some cases. Uh, so for them to come out and do something like this, even if they didn't even really think about this, even if this was just a, you know, a quick little move made by someone low on the totem pole that was just a mistake yeah. it's really it's a way larger blunder than it should be because of everything yeah. else so now i'm looking at it and not and, only are yeah. they not from from the average layperson if i was just an average linux user slash open source zealotty kind of guy i'm looking at it, I'm like great so canonical doesn't get back to gnome doesn't get back to debian and now they're stealing money from gnome and that's, that's how, how it's, and you know, and that's how it feels to people. So they've got to come out, they've got to get in front of the train, they've got to be Superman, put their hand out, stop the train from hitting the nuclear power plant because for some reason they laid train tracks that ran straight into the nuclear power plant. So they have to stop yeah. that right away, and they need to do it. You like, know what's crazy though, dude, is they week. keep building these train tracks into these nuclear power plants, and then like they go away for a couple of days. Like they they are operating at a company that's like the size of Jupiter Broadcasting with the world that's looking at them and, and, and not at all in the same scope as a Microsoft and an Apple, 
But when you start getting into these services, you start people start looking at you in that way, and you've got to start playing in that 24-7 PR game, because this literally could have been some sort of, hey, Banshee, we're thinking about doing this, and then like somebody exploded on a mailing list and went and wrote blog posts and, and spun it way more than it is. Right. And because nobody at Canonical stepping up and going, um, oh, wait a minute, uh, uh, Rationality Police, can we talk about this? They're just like, oh, hey, I think some stuff's going on in Twitter. I'll get to that on Monday, maybe after I have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it really is what it is, isn't it? <laughs> and then and then because they don't get to it, it makes it on shows like this that's seen by hundreds of thousands of Linux users, which is their core audience. Chris, Chris. And I don't get why they keep screwing Chris, up. hundreds of thousands, please. Millions and millions, bajillions millions. of Linux users. Millions and millions, millions of Linux users by 8 a.m. Monday morning. Yeah. Yeah. So they got to stop acting like a small company. Yeah, they do. And uh, I don't know if maybe Mark Shuttleworth, Shuttleworth needs to go back up into space and jump up on top of uh, Mir before it hits. Oh, it is. Sorry, and you know, you know Sorry, here's, here's the thing, though. It's not just, just that stop acting man. like a small company because, hell, hell, I'm a small company. But here's yeah, the thing. Yeah. A small company Communicate a small more. company is always connected. If you only have, so yes. let's say, a three-person company, which turns out Canonical has much, much more than that, uh, you have people that are working on the weekends. You have people who are and Kotoki trying says, to make great. And Kotoki's saying, well, Chris, you're acting like you know Canonical. You don't really know what's going on there in the chat room. But the reality is I'm witnessing the you know the end result the actions are speaking louder than words at this point maybe somebody's out there at canonical saying wait a minute this is bs or wait a minute here's our position yes it's true but here's our side i'm not seeing that and i follow the linux news like a like an sob and if somebody who's all has got you know filters set up and searches set up and it digs through the news all the time isn't seeing the response from canonical they're screwing up yeah just like they screwed up at the launch of the app store now they're screwing this up and just because they're not talking to people Honestly, and, and this this may sound stupid to everybody, there should be a press release on it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I know everyone's like, you know, most people look at the ideas of press releases, and it sounds hokey and corporate and lame. But the reality is, mm -hmm. all, a press release can be for anything. You can literally be like, "Oh, guys, guys, we we misquoted a time somewhere. This is the new information." Press release. It's yeah. not for everyone to read. It's for people like us to read, sift through it, and present to you guys if it's actually interesting or important. So really, they can yeah. release a press release in like half an hour. They can really yes. crank those out fast. And I know you got to get approval through you know, your bosses and your head honchos and whatnot, but come on. If they're head honchos of a company and there's a big problem going on, you toss them an email, you give them a quick call, and be like, hey, can you, can you look this press release over real quick? They'll say, yeah, it looks fine, whatever. Yeah. Hang up the phone on you and get back to their golf game where they're you know, playing golf with diamonds or whatever it is they're doing, and, and you just email out the press release and you're done. That would have solved the issue. So, so, so here's, here's, a problem. Here's, here's, a, here's a perfect example, Brian. Here's a canonical at canonical on Twitter. There are they have 36 followers and that's zero not tweets. really canonical's account, is it? I don't know, man. But if it's not, they what can about, contact Twitter. What about Twitter. like Ad Ubuntu? Is that that's a real account? I, I never know, I never pay out. attention to what the actual Twitter. So, name but about. you know, it doesn't matter because if you are if you're legitimate and somebody's if somebody's taking your name, con, uh, Twitter lets you contact them if you're a business and, and take it back. Oh, that's true. Um, so uh, here's at Ubuntu. It has 529 followers and zero really? tweets. Really. Yes. It's not, no, this no, is that, not an Ubuntu that's account. That's a guy. That's a dude. Yeah, I know. But I'm just saying that's, that's at Ubuntu. But, uh, and here, okay, here's, see, my, here, my point is, is it would literally take them 30 seconds to write oh, a tweet yeah. that says, hey guys, uh, we're looking into this. Uh, stay tuned for more information. Oh, yeah. Uh, we don't think we don't know if the story is exactly right. Just stay tuned, and that's all you got. That's gotta all do. you got to do. Even if you, even if you can't manage to write a two paragraph. But my my guess is my guess is, my guess is this will all be you know blown over next week. You know it's no big deal. They're they're not going to actually do that. Yeah. Um, it just turns out it was some mistake by somebody, and Canonical just really got behind the PR game, forgot to let people know what they were really thinking, let stuff get way out of control that didn't need to, and then by next weekend we'll just kind of laugh it off and maybe poke a little fun at Canonical for not being on their PR game, but that's about it. That's my guess on it. Right. If I'm wrong on that, boy, I am I going to yell next week, but I'm, that's my guess. You know, it's no big deal. It, it, it happens. Canonic. Every every company yeah. makes mistakes. I'll cut them some slack on that. So no on the deal. plus side, dude, uh, maybe uh, if they're lucky, the internet will cease to exist next week, and then they won't have to figure out how to communicate with people. <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next story because it's kind of a good one. Uh, it comes from uh, Grok Law. You remember, uh, bastard. <laughs> that was fantastic. I know. <laughs> you remember uh, Grok Law covered the uh, Novell and um, gosh, <clears throat> Sco. Uh, what's their name? Sco. Gosh, wow. Sco, yeah, yeah the Novell Sco. Yeah, and That's we, we tried to, we tried to get uh, the person that will not be named from Grok Lot on the show. 
Yeah. 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 And and that person I uh, uh, I do not believe exists. Uh, we went round and I'm round with that person. You. That person, that mm. certain individual that goes by initials, that may or may not be a woman. We don't know who this person is, but uh, that person refuses to, to comment on stories, right. to go on shows, to to do anything. Right. Yep. Doesn't want to make a public appearance. Yep. Um, yep. yep. But Grokla, ha- Grokla has a story. Um, it's uh, essentially boils down to Google has filed for a motion to dismiss Oracle's copyright claim against Android and the and the uh, stolen code. Uh, B man, do you happen to have this up here? Do you want to give a shot for the reading the title of this sucker? It's I don't even know if I would be able to. All get right, it I'm going to try to read this very carefully, ladies and gentlemen. This is not this is not easy. Here we go. Here we go. No. Google files motion for leave to file motion for summary judgment on Oracle's copyright claim. Update two X's. Judge says not yet. Well, that that settles it right there, ladies and gentlemen. You don't even re- need to read the article because that is the no. title that you have just gotten, and uh, you now have all the information you'll ever need. Uh, because obviously, we all immediately know exactly what this is about. So here's how I summarize that headline. You, here's <clears throat> how I wrote it. You want to know right, how I wrote right. it? Google files summary judgment on Oracle's copyright claims. Oh. <laughs> That's how I wrote it. <laughs> well, no, no, no. But, that uh, doesn't make sense because what you said right. was accurate, and what was in the article. Right, like, no, no, right. Chris. I boiled again, it down again, in the head Google to the headline. Google files motion yeah. for leave to file motion for summary judgment yeah. on Oracle's copyright claim. Update to access. Now, in, in Grokla's defense, though, I actually think that might be the appropriate legalese. Eh. See, here's the, yeah, here's, the so. uh, here's the what they call the doc entry, uh, motion for leave to file motion. So that's kind of interesting. But uh, Oracle has already responded, and the judge has already responded saying, no, it's too soon. You know what Google's... Uh, here, I'll read you what Google says. This yeah. is directly uh, from Google's statement filed with the court. Oracle's allegations are that Android copies portions of certain basic functional Java application programming interfaces, or APIs, which are interfaces consist, consisting of common names of Java programming language constructs, methods of operations, commands, and other function elements. The use, of Android of such, the use in Android of such common and unprotectable elements is purely functional, namely to enable applications written in Java programming uh, to run on Android devices and to enable programs created by developers for the Android platform to interoperate with existing third-party Java-based software tools. Such use cannot constitute copyright infringement as a matter of law. Mm. So they're saying the similarities are simply there for compatibility. Yeah, there's there's something to that. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah honestly, Google's probably right on that. We'll see. We'll see. It's uh, the judge doesn't necessarily agree so far, but it's all early days. Yeah. Um, you know, we, this could still end up badly for Google, where they're going to have to pay a significant chunk of every. I don't know how they. I don't know what where that. Oh would come man, from. It's not like Google makes that's going to be rough because they are they they only make so many gajillions of dollars from uh, advertising and stealing our information. So man, and poor Oracle, right? Oh. Oracle's hard up for the money too these days. <laughs> <laughs> I maintain. I maintain the allegation. That when Sun sold to Oracle, there was a tease in there that this lawsuit was gonna was gonna be right for the taking to make. Does back this their does this costs. feel like like two monopoly guys with little monocles that are both worth ten bajillion dollars are fighting yeah. over a twenty dollar dinner check? Well, and I dude, mean, you know I what's mean, awesome it's just, about it? It's just honestly, it's asinine that they're they're just like fighting over this little scrap of a morsel. And I'm sure to us, the money that this will be, you know, a four oh, yeah. is like. Yeah, if, if I all of a sudden got the yeah. ability to, you know, to find Google for that much, I'm going after a tooth and nail. I don't care how right yeah. I am because I want I want those billions of dollars. But for them, for yes. them, it's going to be like it's nothing. And it's just bad PR. And honestly, the bad PR would probably be offset by the money. So it'd probably be a net wash. So, yeah, yeah I know. I and, and, you know, and, and the, 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 the truth of the matter is, is all of this stuff, all of these Java, you know, things that are copyrighted and all this stupid crap is created by engineers who sat down and wrote yeah. this stuff. And now you've got, uh, you know, the stereotypical corporate corporate white guy uh, who is trying to make a buck off of something that With they don't a monocle. understand. With a you know, monocle. Absolutely, dude. And probably don't a top hat, I would, I would imagine. Okay. I won't. Now, I want to talk about this next story because I think it's a little indication of the future. I don't know if you guys uh, hear this right mobile- now, but my child absolutely agrees with what we're saying. She's absolutely frustrated by uh, by uh, by Oracle's move here, and she feels like yeah. uh, Google's being a baby about it as well. So she agrees absolutely. <laughs> okay. She is only two well, weeks you know old, she, and she agrees. She's really on she the ball, is man. On the ball, my my, my little Josie's it got it together. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 
Uh, look at look at this story straight out of the future, Brian. This came out of Mobile World Conference. VMware Android handset virtualization is real. It exists. And there was a demo at Mobile World Conference of VMware running on an About Android time. phone. About time. Because, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you remember they announced this stuff like yeah, two years ago. I still think, I still don't get it. I mean, here's, here's the pitch. They, when right? they released their it back is, then, they were like, man, look, you can run Windows Mobile 6.5 on this other platform. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what they announced like two some years ago. We covered it on the show. And, uh, yeah, I know. I remember and, talking uh, about and, it. But now it actually kind of works. So that's kind of cool. I kind of, I kind of can see it from ro for rolling, uh, for running legacy applications and operating systems. But they're at Mobile World pushing it to run Android on Android. I don't there, know if I understand that. What they what they claim is that corporate, you know, enterprises want to have a completely locked down and controlled sure. phone, and now people are merging their personal lives and their business lives oh, on these devices that they can just lose. I see. So I think this works in like a little bit of some sort of DRM where you can remotely nuke the virtual environment if the phone's lost and all of the stuff contained in that virtual environment yeah. is then protected. Um. And so they're launching. If you're watching the video version right now, they just launched up VMware on this Android device. It looks like a slightly older version of Android, maybe like a Android 2 sure, or 1.6, sure. something like that in the VM. But what they say is, yeah, so in here we have Hale and their corporate calendar all set up. And now when they go in there, they're in their corporate world. And then when they close it, they're in their personal phone. You know what's weird? On the video, they don't, they don't seem to really touch it much. I noticed that. They just, they just, launched, they just launch it. And they, for all yeah. we know, it could be essentially just a static picture. I have yet yeah, let to me see it move. I'll, I'll jump ahead. Maybe he does something. I, I I've not seen it move, dude. Yeah. You know, I'm... I'm Two minutes into the video and they never actually touch oh wait oh there it goes there you did go did it move there it is did it move it did finally move well all he did he brought up the menu launch well that's a something was it was it fast that is something. was it peppy it uh, it's tough to say because it's, it's an older version of android yeah it it's seems like he's enough. tapping an icon and it's actually crashing that is, that that's is what's kind of what it seems like doesn't it it's, it's crashing an yeah. exit button anyway yeah uh, it just seems it, it like seems calendar. a little little hokey to me um and honestly I don't see this going anywhere because do you see companies actually spending the time to set up a, a secure virtual environment for people to have their phones, which are going to have to run on a specific class of phones, I'm sure. Right. And, and probably kill battery. I'm just not seeing that. I, I, you know, it's kind of cool. I dig it. I'm glad they did it because that's true, Honestly, but. corporate America is slow with this stuff. You know what I see the most common right now is users with an iPhone or an Android and then a BlackBerry for work. Yep. I see that all that's, the time. That's, that's how know, it so, works. Now, now if yeah, they came out and they said, here, you know, here's an Android phone and here's a virtual environment that you can run, you know, uh, web OS and a couple other OSs in. Now cool. I'm interested. In my, and for devs, right? Hell, that could be cool. Uh, Ubuntu or OpenSUSE. Run a full desktop class. Yeah. Yeah. System in yeah. there. Even if it's an ARM based desktop, you know, you know, full distro. Sure. Yeah. Why not? That would be yeah. glorious. Yeah. I would love, yeah, especially love that. yeah, that would be great, especially for testing, for troubleshooting, and things like that. So I, I could see the advantages to it. I don't know if I see what their angle is. I, I don't, I, I don't you know, get the corporate thing, but everything else yeah. sounds groovy. So hey, that's where all the money is. Way right? to go, VMware, so, for making something that seems pretty cool. Something that people will probably. My like. voice went up uh, at the end there. That means it's something. <laughs> that's right now, the uh, last week was you know we talked a lot about the happenstance around Nokia dumping Miko yeah. essentially. Yeah. By and the way, uh, uh, still a little sore about that. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, so yeah, last week I was cranky. This week less cranky, just kind of like sore, like uh, like I got Bitter? into a fight Bitter? with someone, and uh, now I'm yeah. still hurting, and uh, yeah. and looking around, licking my wounds a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And you can't quite sit like you like to no. sit, and you have to lay no. a little differently. No. It's not quite as comfortable. I'm sitting on a donut right now. Yeah. Yes. Right. But wait. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I think that implies a certain type of fight. Nope, it uh, does not. Now Nokia uh, might have might have done you wrong, Brian. But Intel's coming along and they're rubbing your back because they're saying you, we're still committed to Migo despite Nokia's defection. Which I and I say good for you. Intel's coming out and they're saying we're still planning to ship hardware. We're still planning to go with the Migo on a mobile platform. Here, here's a preview of the interface, which kind of got well, honestly got a little pooped on. But yeah. uh, they said later on, they said, look, we can kind of understand why Nokia did what they did. They're kind of in a tough spot. And and I don't know if this is kind of a dig, but the Intel CEO said, I understand they just couldn't afford to stick with Migo. They couldn't stick it out. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are now saying, uh, Nokia, you just kissed your ecosystem goodbye. Yep. Right? They have, now they have no control over things end to end. Now, they no, dude, and control. that's the big thing now is that's how Android and that's how iPhone and that's how WebOS is going to have to compete. 
is ecosystems, music stores, app stores, video That's how they're stores, earning revenue. social integration, yeah. ad revenue, all this stuff, all of which Microsoft <coughs> is the furthest behind everyone. I bet even RIM is going to be able to catch up fast. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Because e technically, I was saying this on the live stream before the show, technically, Microsoft had a music store and a video store before iTunes ever even yeah. launched, right? And, and then iTunes launched, and it's like they put a rocket pack on, and they blasted past Microsoft, right. and now they have 5x the content, 5x the applications, 5x five, five the size of the ecosystem. So it's, it's totally possible for a smaller player to hop in and just dominate the space in like a year's time. It's totally yeah. possible. You the problem is, is when you're, when, you're move, when you're hitched to Microsoft, they're just not moving. Well, and so that's now not Nokia is just going to be attached that's to that. That's not entirely fair. Like, I'm, oh, dude, I'm, I'm not a huge... They're, they're moving, but they move too they do slow. Move they're slow. two years too late They all do the move time. slow, but I mean, come on. At least, like, like, look at it this way. We all know that their whole Windows Phone 7 thing, they started it kind of late, right? They started it way late. Yeah. And they yeah. started it as yeah. like a stopgap measure. And when they and they released it fast. And honestly, it it is, even if we disagree with some of the aspects of it, it is it is a fairly impressive little setup. So, so that's But cool. it's impressive for what smartphones did two years ago, and I, I, I really mean yeah. that. It doesn't multitask. It doesn't copy and paste. Uh, it, it doesn't have a lot of features. It doesn't even do multiple calendars correctly. No, no, that's You know, that's, it's that's just, true. it's too far that's behind. True. And it, it's got 8,000 applications total. Yeah, but see, versus Android's like 100,000 and, and, and yeah. Apple's whatever. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree completely. I, you're, you're right on that. I don't know. It's... There's, there's See, worse the thing, things though. to do, I, I, I honestly think. Sure. Oh, there's there's worse decisions they could have made. But I, I you got to wonder, there was, you got Intel saying, we're sticking with Mego. Uh, another company came out and said, we're going to develop this splash top based on Mego. We're going to have all these hardware devices. If, if Mego can sort of have a mini Android effect where because it's open, it can just sort of explode yeah. like Android did, then, then the applications will start arriving and momentum will be built. And, and Nokia is... And that that could happen in by the end of this year, and Nokia will just be shipping their first Windows phone at the yeah. end of this year. Rough you know for what's Nokia really then. really crazy? There was actually a press release this last week from uh, basically from the the group of individuals, or, or the group of developers that work on a lot of those open platforms that we talked about last week. If you haven't watched last week's episode, go go watch or listen to last week's episode uh, where we talked about you know like Mare and SHR and, and all these variety of yes. of cool little mobile platforms that you can put yeah. on phones. Uh, some in development, yeah. some not in development everywhere. Some pretty great. Um, but there was a yeah. little press release from them say, hey. You know, with everything that's going on, now's the time to get behind your community-driven mobile platform. And here's some great mm -hmm. ones. Like, it literally just, it kind of was like they watched our show, uh, quoted it a little bit, uh, and put it out as a press release, which was great. But what amazed me was nobody paid attention. And you'd almost think, like, like the gizmodos and the, the end gadgets and, and, and all those other people in the world would have taken a look at that and said, hey, well, if nothing else, mm. this is interesting that there is this groundswell of movement to get these um, amazing open source platforms on the mobile devices from their community driven. Because uh, some of them are mm. downright impressive. Some of them are hunks of junk, but some of them are I was impressed by Mir, and really I think it has some impressive. potential. And exactly. It, what amazed me was nobody noticed. The news outlets just didn't care, which tells you something. <laughs> People want big companies to build their phones, to put an OS on it. They don't want to flash their ROM. They don't want to, they don't want to do all that stuff. Even yeah. even yeah, the right. tech journalists, even the tech journalists over at Engadget and Gizmodo and everywhere else, which those are, I mean, those are two of the big ones, but you know, there's others. They don't really want to do it mm -hmm. either. All they want to do is they want, you know, they want uh, HTC to give them a brand new Android phone. They want, you know, a cool new iPhone from Apple and they want to play around with it and install Angry Birds on it, call it good and go home. And right. to me, that is so terribly sad because there's such cool gear out there with some amazing software available and yeah, it's like yeah. the whole tech wor world is missing it they're missing out on all of it and that sucks you, you know i i would say i completely i completely know what you're saying going going from you're looking at it from the power user perspective going with a rooted android device you know it's now if the next android device i buy it is a requirement that the, the there's already a community out there that, that is supplying ROMs and supplying the ability to root it because I don't want to be locked down. I, the fact that I don't get administrative rights over my own crazy. device seems crazy yeah, to me. It's exactly. Nuts. And and I, and I was I was talking with you on instant message the other day and I thought, you know, 
if we would have looked at this, if we would have looked at this five years ago, the idea that all these manufacturers are selling these completely locked down devices that I have zero control over is it would have been like like if we were if we were early in the PC era and Compaq and IBM were coming out with machines like this, you know they had some early lockdown ROMs and firmwares, but all that stuff was worked out, and you wouldn't have had the PCs yeah. explode like they did if they were we, all locked we, down like this. So we you would need have, that. We open, would have been furious. Oh yeah, yeah it would have been. A, we would we have been, would have been in full on nerd rage mode. It would have been it would have been abuse of the consumer. It would have been it would have been yep. unheard and, of. And nowadays, um, when you know our tablets and our phones constitutes like especially our phones, like ninety percent of the computing people tend to do on a day to day basis. At least the power users. Mm -hmm. Why on earth mm -hmm. would we ever put up with being that constricted, that restricted? And you know it's it's, it's terrible. Them. And it's not just DRM. It's just the entire platform. It's the, the whole things are just so locked down. We have so little choice in the matter. And it's not about freedom of open source software. It's about freedom to just tinker. It's about freedom to own the device you own. And right. I, I just, it, it bothers me. But what it bothers me... It's about, it's about the freedom to learn. What bothers me the most, because we have some great, great open source under a variety of licenses, mobile platforms that we can play with. Some of them that are really right. modern and amazing. I mean, hell, MAMO 5 is still a great OS and is right there. We can use it. Amigo uh, is yeah. right there. It still exists. We can use it. Right. it. It works right now. It may need a few drivers for a few phones, but it works. It's there. Right. Now, what, what amazes right. me and what upsets me is that the, the tech journalist world <clears throat> doesn't care. Because people aren't knowing, finding out about these things. We know about them, and a lot of our listeners know about them, because we're not just the power users, but we're like the developers, and we're like, we're like the, I hate right. to use the word zealots, but we're people like really it in it. You know, we are involved yeah. with it. But the rest of the world, the other 99.9%, .9 they've never heard of any of I these know. things. You're and absolutely if they had, right. You're absolutely right. I mean, granted, not all of them are going to flock to it, but maybe 5%. And you know what? 5% is a lot of damn people. It's, it's you sad. know what I worry about, Brian? I, and I, and I, it sounds corny, but I'm actually serious. I worry about the children. And what, when I say that is, uh, I spent some time. I know it sounds stupid, right? It does sound stupid. I laugh. All right, does. continue. I'm but with I you. Spent, but that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I go spent call some Stevie time. Wonder, have him make a song for you. I know, right? I spent some time, uh, you know, uh, like a year ago working for a school district, and what I walked away with because that was the same school district that I went to school with, you know, years and years ago. And uh, I walked away with the realization that the students there for the vast majority, much, much, much vaster majority than when I was in school, don't care about technology. Yeah. They literally, it, to them, it's it's not fascinating anymore. It's it's an appliance yeah. object. And I, I, I believe it is the iPad, iPhone, and iPod touch azization of, of kids' playtime. They all, and, and the reason I can say this is because in order for them to get on the network, I had to add their MAC address to our DHCP server. They all have iPods yeah. and iPhones, and they're all locked down. They don't have the option to discover yeah. and tinker. It sucks. And and that's, the reason I could discover and tinker is the reason I'm sitting here now doing a podcast and honestly, with you. It goes even further than that. It's the reason that you can earn a good living now. It's the reason that Absolutely. your skills are, are desired by the corporate America to accomplish the iPadization. It's, Absolutely. Apple could not pull off what they're pulling off if, if, the, if us, if people our age and, you know, within that range, uh, we're not mm -hmm. able to tinker around with, 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 you know, DOS and Unix and, you know, their Amigas and their Commodore 64s and really just get into the guts of things, play around with it and break their machines. All the devices we have today that are these new mobile platforms that are locked down are directly benefiting from the evolution of the computer industry that took place in this in the spot where anybody could come up with a language, anybody could write an application, any language. Would Objective C be around if we didn't have that ability? Would we have evolved to Objective C for application development? Honestly, I, I can make an argument that we really shouldn't have any. Anyway. Oh, I agree. I agree, and that's true. But that's what happens yes, in an open market. It's great. It's great. Lots and lots of cool things. <clears throat> Everything from and because of that, that's why you don't use Objective C on Android, and that's why you don't use Objective C on Windows Mobile or RIM devices. You have options. Yeah. But if we were in a locked down ecosystem world, you wouldn't have an option. And and how do we how do we get those options back? Honestly, and I think it's these out open platforms you're open talking about. Open platforms combined with the power of things like Gumsticks as a platform. Yeah. Um, yeah or yeah. Um, um, gosh, there's a couple of other open platforms. What's that one? Uh, was it Bug? Something Bug? Uh, mm. You remember what I'm talking about? The little like like no. modular uh, computing thing. 
The one we just covered last uh, week. Like I've a couple, a couple months back, we talked about it again. Oh, okay, but uh, I'll <laughs> find a link and put it in the forum. But anyway, so um, let's just drop my pen on the floor. That's what happens. I got all excited and I start flipping my pen it around. And I drop stuff. I understand. So, but, I mean, yeah. so there are options. So like, there yeah. are options out there. Such as Gumsticks. There are great mobile open platforms, you know, a variety of Linux based platforms, but there are others as well that we can put on yeah. them. We can build our own phones. We can build our own tablets. We can build our own portable devices that are, hell, made out of wood. Hell, taped together with electrical tape on the inside. Just put some duct, duct tape. tape that, like, some that yeah, blue, buddy. shiny duct tape on the outside, and it's just rocking awesome. There's, I kind of would like there's that. There's so many things that we can still do that the kids can still do, um, but. No one talks about it. No one knows mm-hmm. about it. People don't. You don't. You don't see all the big magazines. You don't see like a, a Byte magazine coming out and say, you know, hey, you can do this amazing, cool stuff. What what you right. see is them. You know, uh, the new the iPhone, new iPhone app apps are out. Oh my gosh, is Apple going to release a new uh, iPhone update? Oh, is Gingerbread going to be uh, for tablets or phones? Oh, we don't know. But man, we better sit on 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 pins and needles waiting to find out which specific revision of this Java interpreter mm-hmm. we get to run on our phone, but not put our own apps on. I mean, there's there's just so much stuff that totally has absolutely saying, no it does not drive us to create it doesn't drive us to do anything exciting right it drives us to have someone else create and honestly us. and this is where we're at a point where the nerds of the world i mean the real nerds not the nerds walking around uh you know uh you know pushing you know you know the android let's let, let gonna be honest here android is not the answer <clears throat> android is part of the problem because android while sitting on top of a linux kernel doesn't really promote that tinkering that that enterprising sure. spirit of trying to learn trying to break trying to make something new what we need is we need people to sit down and we need to make a stand right now and just say you know what we're going to run some really crappy distros for a while we're just going to say you know what let's try three or four of these you know community driven linux powered for the most part some bsd powered distros for mobile devices yeah. get on board with them make them great and you know what and make it clear to the journalists of the world to the end gadgets of the world that we are going to actually run this stuff that people are interested in this that, that it people should care. be covered and and, and then, then we'll it. get then they'll cover it and then cnn yeah. will cover it and they'll be like ha, 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 i know you all have an iphone but uh some people who have long beards and live in a basement are trying this stuff and it's fine at least then it would be coverage and that's what we need yeah so yeah that's, that's just the point we're at and it, it frustrates me that we're we're not there uh but there are great stuff and honestly over the next couple of months we really need to spend time us on this show the other linux shows out there the linux websites out there really talking about promoting reviewing all of those various options because this is yeah we gotta act we, have to we do. gotta act it's the new it's the new it's the new technology platform it is. And we're being left behind. And and just to just to wrap up the Android statement, you know, I, I it is true. It's it's true that it's it, it the 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 success of Android um, equals the success of the Dalvik virtual machine and the Android app ecosystem, which is portable to any, any platform. platform. So, uh, it, you know, it, while right now it means more Linux kernels exist in the world, it doesn't necessarily mean that five years from now more Linux kernels will exist in the world. It could be a BSD kernel or it doesn't whatever. matter. Not technologically, yeah. um, anyway. So I, yeah, boy, boy, it's a tough call. Should we move on yeah, to the next story? Let's, let's I think move we on. Beat that one. All right, I got the last story on the news docket here, B man, because I'm really excited about this. I've, I've, I've had my comments before, but this is looking really good. GNOME three alpha has been Ooh. released, and I've even got a couple of screenshots here. And uh, I gotta say, you know Looks what? Nice, doesn't it? It's it. The, the new GNOME shell is looking is looking pretty yeah, slick. It. It's looking a lot better than I expected. I like the, uh, um. I don't want to call it expose, but it's kind of like one of those all windows effects. I'm digging that. It's got built in messaging, sort of like the Ubuntu uh, me yep. menu. It's got a completely new design and you've got uh, an Im- improvement to Nautilus and the new application chooser. And I kind of thought, you know, why are they doing this? Why are they trying to do a new application switcher? And then I realized it's because about one out of every three distributions already replaces anyway, the home yeah. menu launcher yeah. anyways. So obviously so, there's a need for something new. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why they're doing that. Uh, so uh, you're probably going to be able to get your hands on this. I think the first distro that's going to ship with this this alpha, at least as an optional install, is I think I think Ubuntu 11.04 is on the docket to have the alpha as an option, and that I think that'll be the first big distro to come yeah. out with it. 
So you can get your hands on it then, or you can. And get honestly, you know, and if you're you're really you're really itching, you can get it now, and you can you can toss it on there and yeah. tinker around with it. I haven't yet, and I, I kind of feel like a tool for having not tried it yet, despite the alpha being out. I'll have to try it over the next week or two and really give it a, a full run. Because uh, I'm what I'm I kind of dig, dude. What I kind of dig is this new launcher is activated with a button push, mm-hmm. and then you the uh, search field when you do that is immediately the active element, and you can start typing, and it. You know, it'll it'll find that, and you can just hit enter. So you can actually launch applications now, sort of like GNOME do mouseless. Yes, I kind of I kind of looking forward. I mean, because realistically, that. I mean, I I kind of use GNOME do half the time anyway. It's the first. It's like the first GNOME based utility I install after I get yeah, Dropbox. Dro- Dropbox and Chrome installed. GNOME do. <laughs> well, <laughs> or cool. yeah, Dro- yeah, and I put uh, Chromium honestly, on there pretty quick. My too. virtualization tools come on there pretty quick. But anyway, but yeah, yeah no, yeah. it it actually looks pretty cool. I know we've actually made mm-hmm. a fair bit of fun of GNOME, GNOME Shell, and GNOME three in the past. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, we were yeah. kind of merciless. We we kind of jabbed them in the eye repeatedly with a hot poker. Um, but it does actually yeah. look kind of cool. So I'm. I'm hopeful that it runs well. Um, now, granted, it's alpha, so everyone, if you do try it out, cut them a little bit of slack. I'm going oh, yeah, to have to cut them some slack. There, yeah. Look at it purely from a, a point of view of what it could be when it's not yeah. alpha anymore. Once it's, once it's yeah. le- at least late beta, then we can start really criticizing the heck out of like performance and, and stability and all that. But this does look kind of yep. interesting. I'm, I'm curious, especially with you know, Canonical going with the Unity route and saying you know, we're not mm-hmm. going to use GNOME 3. We're, gonna, we're right. building Unity, and in fact, we're even building a, KDE, or a QT version of Unity uh, for non-3D accelerated uh, fallback, uh, yeah. platforms or the, on 3D accelerated machines, um, which is really splitting off from GTK and GNOME to a really intense degree. So I, I'm curious what this is going to mean, and I'm really curious what OpenSUSE and Fedora do in right. relation to GNOME 3 right now. Um, you know, Me I, too. Because, I, I mean, Me even, too. no matter what their plans are, if they come out and say, yes, we're going to do it as soon as possible, or no, we're going to wait for a while, really it's going to all depend on how good GNOME 3 is uh, when it comes time right. for their release cycle. So, I'm And curious. what happens if GNOME 3 rocks? What happens if GNOME 3 rocks? If GNOME 3 rocks, then you, you know pr- what's going to happen. Nobody's going to switch to Unity except for Ubuntu. No, that's, that's, that's the whole thing. And it's going to go a little bit deeper than that. Canonical and Ubuntu are really investing heavily in not just building Unity, but promoting the hell out of it. So, And I think I'm on record saying I don't necessarily disagree. They, you know, it could be it a could solid be awesome. differentiator in the Linux desktop. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, however, let's, yeah. say, let's, just, let's, just, let's just say a hypothetical here. OpenSUSE comes out. Next release, next, next release or the release after hits. It's got a really yeah. well-polished version of GNOME Shell and GNOME 3. Looks great. They've, yeah. they've added the, that kind of classy kind of green thing that goes on on OpenSUSE, and it just looks really cool there with the, the GNOME 3.0 look. And it rocks. And everybody wants to try it out. Well, then everybody's going to be installing whatever that distro is, OpenSUSE. And mm-hmm. all those Ubuntu users who are most interested in you know, a Linux with a great usable environment, with a cool-looking environment, they want an easy-to-use Linux distro, that's what really got Ubuntu on the map. They're going to be looking at that and going, well, you know what? I'll give it a try. I think you could Wouldn't see you could funny? see a moment where a distro, say op- you know, OpenSUSE has been moving along here at the 10% mark in user share, and, and, and Ubuntu is yeah. up here in the 45% user share mark. You could see it joink and crisscross yeah. in like a three-month segment. And I know people don't upgrade all that fast, but if enough of the power users do, uh, that'll make all the difference in the world. If, and if there's enough and those that little bar to- on the right side of DistroWatch will just go crazy, and everything will be flip-flopping all yeah. over the place. So I think that yeah. as as crazy as it sounds, this could be a differentiating factor. And this could also be huge for KDE 4. Because if people are trying out Unity and trying out GNOME 3 and they, they step away and they're like, dude, this stuff blows. Or enough has changed. I, I might, might as well just, well just KDE jump at over the same to KDE. Time. Uh, so honestly, mm-hmm. there's, there's three possible options happening right now for the kind of the de facto user experience and in my mind. And I think that it it's be totally funny, anyone's dude? game. You know, uh, a good, solid, easy to use, really polished implementation of GNOME is what put Ubuntu on the map. I mean, really, all the big guys, a lot of them, with exception of uh, Fedora Core, were going yeah. KDE. And GNOME said, so we're going to come along, we're going to pick certain applications, we're going to do nice, polished GNOME. Wouldn't it be funny if another distro said, all right, we're going to do a really nice GNOME 3, and that's what puts, that's what steals Ubuntu's market share, yeah. is they, somebody beats them at their yeah. own game again. That's true. All over again, history repeats itself. It could, it, could, it could switch. Then again, you know, it could rock. Heartbeat. 
in a heartbeat, man. Yeah. 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 I'm interested. Huh. But honestly, but we're not really going to know for at least another two months because that's the earliest that we're going to see Unity shipping on something. And honestly, by that point, we'll see a little bit more polish with GNOME 3. So we'll really see what's going to happen. Yeah. Honestly, at that point, I think we'll be able to be ready to actually make some predictions about what's going to occur. I'm looking forward to it because we're going to you know we're just going to get to cover all this stuff on the Linux Action Show. So all this stuff we're going to dig into and we'll, we're going to feature it here, and so people are going to hear. Man, I'm going to be wiping and rewiping my test machine like every three days yes. to fit, to get all this stuff figured out. I know, this man. Be so I much it. work. I know it. You're welcome, Internet. <laughs> the things we yeah. do for you guys. Uh, now that's all the news, Brian. But you know that's really all the show we have this week too. It's a little bit of a shorter show, and uh, I thought we just there was a ton of stuff to focus on there hey, Chris, that we could dig Chris, into, and I think that worked pretty well. I forgive yeah, you. <laughs> Hey, You're totally welcome. Uh, now, uh, I would love to hear some people's thoughts on any of the topics we cover today. So there's, uh, of course, the comments wherever you're watching this over on our website or on you know YouTube or wherever you're at, but also the colony at jupitercolony.com. You can check out and there'll be a thread in there just for the Linux action. There sure is. B-Man, is there other anything else, any other business you want to attend to before business. we just wrap this episode Let's up? Let's see. We talked about the Facebook. Facebook.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. Talk about the colony. Get the announcements. Forum. That's the pretty releases. exciting. There's Twitter. Yeah. There's Twitter. Brian Lunduk yep. and I'm Chris Twitter. OAS. Com. Good stuff. Yep. Good stuff. There you go. Uh, you that's, uh, that's darn near it uh, as far as I can tell. Okay, yeah, man. That's good stuff. All, all right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Linux Action Show. Now, we come out every Sunday over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And while you're there, you can get the show in pretty much any size and format you want and subscribe to the RSS feed to get it automatically when a new episode comes out. You know what Why I want? Why would you want to do that? I want what? an arch-powered phone. Yeah. I just decided. Run Amigo. I just, Run Amigo. No, I want an Arch. <laughs> I do. Uh, arch power. Linux Action Show. I want Arch. I want Arch. Anyway, yeah. yes. Arch on a phone? Arch on a phone. That's what I'm talking about. You crazy, man. Wow. That's hardcore. That'd be a fast phone. That'd be hardcore. Now, that would be a phone that would perform outperform all the Come other on, phones. Come on, man. The Linux Action Show. Hardcore. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Maybe we'll get the new uh, Gnome Alpha 3 on our Dude, phone, Dude, Gnome too. Alpha 3 on top of Arch on my phone. <laughs> hardcore well maybe somebody out there can let us know how it goes and then we'll cover it oh hey you know what i got uh, i got coming in the mail theoretically this should be pretty fun a um really small uh so they're sending it in for a review unit like i think it's like smaller than a shoebox, maybe about the size of like an external usb drive uh home server linux home server it's like this complete home server solution in a tiny little package nice. and they're shipping us one for review uh, at least they should be. awesome so uh we should cover that on a i love the hell out of well. that Thank you.